Time to can some beans. I have this bucket of beans in my basement because that's where I keep some food. And I kind of forgot they were there, maybe for a couple of years, three or four, but who's counting? And I thought, hey, wouldn't it be awesome to put them in some jars and pressure can them? But first, I need to make sure they are capable of being salvaged. So dry beans do last a while in storage, but the problem is after a while, they can really dry out and they tend to not rehydrate very well. So before I go to all the trouble of pressure canning these, I wanna make sure they are going to be edible in some way, shape or form. Okay, so I threw these in the Instant Pot for about 30 minutes and now it's the moment of truth. I have them here. I'm gonna see if they are edible. And they're actually pretty soft. Like they're not crunchy at all. Um, they cooked up like I would expect beans to cook up even if they weren't like four years old. Do I recommend leaving beans in your pantry for four years? No, I do not. Do these beans have the maximum nutritional value as a fresh bean would? Probably not. But they're edible, they're not stale, they don't taste bad, but we can doctor them up in stews and chilies and the kids will eat them for lunch. So I'm going to turn these into some pantry fillers. Which brings me to my next point. Yes, you need a pressure canner if you are canning beans or any other low acid food. I tend to get into discussions sometimes with people because they say things like, great aunt Martha used to can beans or meat or soup or whatever with a water bath canner and she didn't die. To which I respond, good for great aunt Martha, but the science says otherwise and it's not worth playing a game of Russian roulette with your home canned foods. Therefore, always follow approved recipes from a trusted source like the Ball Blue Book, this is my ancient copy, or a website like the National Center for Home Food Preservation. The method I am using today is from the Ball Blue Book, it is approved. It's really important because Botulism is a problem, you guys, it's scary. I'm sorry if you disagree with me. Any comment you leave trying to convince me otherwise won't work because science. We're gonna get our pressure canner and we also need to get our beans ready. I am using navy beans, which it always confuses me a little bit why these are called navy beans because they're white and I always feel like they should be navy blue. But you could also use pinto beans, kidney beans, uh, chickpeas, AKA garbanzo beans, any sort of dry bean you have in your cupboard. I just stuck these in some water before I went to bed, let them sit overnight. And then this morning I drained the water, put fresh water in the pan and let these cook for 30 minutes and that's it. So I have full canning tutorials on my blog and in my Canning Made Easy ebook. So I'm not gonna go into all the ins and outs of selecting a pressure canner, all the details today. If you need that information, head over there to get it. This is my pressure canner. I've had it for a long time. It's an all-American and I kind of love it. So I'm gonna get the canner heating up with a couple inches of water in the bottom. I have my rack down there so we don't have any jar breakage. It's gonna start doing its thing while we fill up the jars with beans. So one of the nice things about pressure canning is you don't have to sterilize the jars first. You want them clean and you want them hot, but the pressure canner is gonna get so hot while it does its thing, it'll sterilize the food and the jars. So I'm just gonna wash these in hot water so they're not cold when I put my hot beans inside and call it good. All right, I have my beans that are hot. They just got done boiling for 30 minutes just to get them warm. We're not trying to cook them. I have my hot jars waiting, funnels, jar lifter, ladle. Let's do this. I am gonna add a teaspoon of sea salt to each quart jar. This is totally for flavor. It doesn't do anything for the preservation. So if you're trying to avoid salt, just leave it out. I'm just gonna release any bubbles in here to make sure I don't have any trapped air, which will cause some liquid loss once we start canning. Make sure the, the head space is just right. Gonna wipe these rims real quick because I slopped juice all over the place. And I wanna make sure my lids seal up. All right, the lid is on. Now I'm going to watch this little vent over here. 
Once steam starts coming out of the top, I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes and let it vent that entire time. You can't see it, but you can hear it. There's some steam coming out. All right, 10 minutes is up. Now I'm gonna put my weight on the canner. You can't see it because my mitt's covering it up, but I have it at the 15 pounds of pressure because we live at high altitude. Now I just have to wait until I hear this do its first little jingle. Once I hear that noise, I'm gonna set the timer for an hour and a half. So you need to process your quartz for an hour and a half, your pints for an hour and 15 minutes. And yes, it's important to go the whole time. Don't skimp on the cooking time. So while we're waiting for that, I wanted to take you in and show you the, the finished model horse barn. So this is the finished product. Christian made it all from scratch, every last piece. He hand cut the rough cut wood. He did the little stone accents. He did a pressed copper roof. Do you want to show us, kind of give us a, re a really quick tour? So what's your favorite part about My the barn? favorite part of the barn is the sliding doors. Yeah, those are pretty cool. They're just like the real deal. And then my second is the tack room because it holds all my All your stuff. Things. You have your, your girl in there hanging up her bridle. Yeah. Cool. Christian welded this little feeder out of some rod he had laying around. And then this is just a stump of wood that he spray painted green to look like, hey, so the horses have a round bale feeder. Yeah. Just like just like our big horses, huh? Yeah. Okay, hear that? That means we can start the timer. Okay, so this hour and a half is pretty easy for me. I just need to make sure that it's jiggling like that one to three times a minute. Once I get my burner kind of set where I need it to be, I don't have to sit here and stare at it. Thank goodness. Uh, but I just want to make sure that it's not jiggling constantly because that means the pressure is too high or if it's not jiggling at all, that means the pressure is too low. So one to three jiggles per minute is kind of your sweet spot. Has completely depressurized, so it's down to zero pressure. So I took off the weight and now we just need to open up the lid and see how we did. So we may not hear any popping of the lids at this point because I've let this sit here for a couple hours before I remove the lid. Um, but it looks like so far all of the lids sealed, no jars broke. So fingers crossed, the moment of truth. I think they all sealed. Since these have cooled considerably and they're sealed, I'm gonna go ahead and take these rings off for storage. Um, I don't leave the rings on in the pantry because sometimes it can create a false seal or things can just get a little bit moldy or gross if there was any food residue that came out of the jar while the jars were processing. And yes, I did not do the dishes before I started recording this video. So there you have it. Okay, everybody grab a couple jars. Be really careful, they're heavy. You can take one, Sagey. Sometimes it smells like Sharpie. One for me. Don't drop it. Hot. It's not hot, it's just warm. Just hold it really careful, okay? All right, time to take these downstairs to the larder. So there's been a lot of talk lately about being prepared and having food in case you have to stay in your house for a while. Um, there's a lot of things going around on the news. You know, it feels really good to have food on hand. So whether it is canning the pickles or the broth or the meat or the four-year-old navy beans, the little bit of work is 100% worth it in my mind when it saves me from having to feel that need to run to the store every time the news reports something new. 